This is going to be interesting. I, I wanted to touch on this. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you've been keeping up with the whole Will Smith thing, right, at the at the Oscars. I I'm, I just seen you reference it. I, I listened to you and Yaya referencing it. So, uh, but no, I, I haven't, you know, I'm not. I don't have news and I don't look at, but I, I seen that. So I know that I, I seen, I seen the, the thing. Right. I don't really want to dive into that uh, per se. I want to talk about uh, energy, uh, light energy, dark energy, uh, and your take on it. Uh, you want to kick it off or, or would you like for me to kick it off? Either way, I mean, where, where were you wanting to go with it? I'd like to hear what you, you know, just what you have, what, what you've been thinking. Right, right. Well, what is dark energy? What is uh, light energy? And what are they to be used for? Uh, some believe they're different. Uh, there's vast differences. Some believe they're the same. Um, I lean towards... On the surface, well, ideally, theoretically, they are the same. They are the same, meaning uh, they're supposed to be used for the same purpose, the same cause. And that's, in my opinion, for righteousness. Uh, there should be, uh, you know, uh, they should be used morally, uh, morally correct, uh, in the, morally correct in the right way. And so, uh, whether it's dark energy or, or light energy, you know, you can have, when we say light on the surface, that sounds like a good thing, right? And when we say dark on the surface, it sounds like a bad thing. But it's not good or bad. It's about intent. Uh, that's what I look at, the heart. And so, you and I were talking last week about that intent and about things being in black and white. Uh, some people saying things in black and white, but... There being a gray area, and that gray area is the heart, the intent. Even though I may get uh, the letter of the law wrong, you know, I didn't violate the, the, the spirit of the law. And so that's where that gray area is, the intent. What did I intend to do in the heart? Mm -hmm. and so this is where yeah. you can have you can have a uh, a wicked a wicked gift, right? <laughs> And you can also have a, a righteous kill. And and that's all about intent. There's a such thing as a wicked gift and a righteous kill. Uh, and I'll explain this and then I'll let you have the floor. A wicked gift. <laughs> a wicked gift, say I give you, uh, say I do, a, I do a favor for you or I give you a gift, a diamond necklace, let's say that. But my intent is to lure you to your demise or to your death uh, unrighteously. Uh, you didn't do anything mm -hmm. that deserved that. And I did that to lure you. I, I, I put something shiny in your face and you thought it was coming from a good, genuine place. But I did it to lure you to gain your trust. That's a wicked gift. A righteous kill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A, a righteous kill is... Uh, me defending your life. Uh, someone comes in, a uh, killer, murderer, whatever, invades, invades the home. I'm defending your life. I'm defending my life. I kill this assailant. I kill this 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 uh, this this guy. That was through righteousness. That was through being virtuous. That was through being moral. Uh, my intent was not about ego. It wasn't to be unrighteous, you know, uh, that was to protect a life. So that's a righteous kill. Mm -hmm. It's all about intent. And so, uh, yeah, dark energy isn't arbitrarily bad and light energy isn't arbitrarily good on the surface. You know, we got to dig deeper and find those gray surface, areas. Yeah. yeah, we got to dig deeper mm -hmm. and find that gray area. Like what, what is the intent? Where does the heart lie? Your thoughts? Uh, that That's interesting because, again, even though it might appear as light or angel of light or whatever it is, the, the, again, like you said, the motive 
you have to be able to feel and and to be able to somehow feel uh, a underlying dark motive and so even though it might appear as light energy it essentially is dark energy right and as far as the other side when you when you you know are protecting somebody i don't know it's it's hard to say that it's dark energy per se but yet i know what you mean because Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about, but it's like, are they really dark or are they really light? Well, because it's like, it's but, like if you have, you know, you have, you have two ends of a spectrum. Yeah. It's the same. I mean, I always used to put out classes with people talking about dark energy versus light energy. Dark scientists actually did a study to where darkness has no substance. There's nothing. And the word evil in Hebrew means nothing. That's the definition. It's lack of anything, lack of substance at all. Not fruitful. So I would tell people, you know, yeah. So I would, I would, you know, ask people if you go into a, a dark uh, warehouse that has no windows uh, and you turn the light on, where does the darkness go? And they're like, so it's not a real thing. Darkness isn't a real thing. I believe we're all children of the light, but when we push the light away from us, there's nothing. We're empty. And when we're empty, what is there but darkness? I don't yeah. know. They well, said that, that, you know, science has actually done a study where the, the light actually has substance to it. It's actually a substance. They can read the substance, but when there's no light, when there's darkness, there's absolutely zero substance. They can't read it. It's not even readable. So when you think of it that way, wherever there's darkness, if you turn the light on, what happens to the darkness? Oh, yeah, the darkness goes away, uh, but you always got that shadow, too. <laughs> you always got that shadow lurking. But yeah, even, even waiting if, for the light to go away, right? Right, right. Even in the pure darkness, though, your eyes will adjust. You can see light through darkness after a while. If you look deep enough, your eyes will adjust, and you'll be able to see. Mm -hmm. uh, even in a completely dark room, your eyes will eventually adjust, and, and you can see some light. Even when you close your eyes, after a while, you can see light. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, true, because is, so does that tell us where the light's coming from? In the beginning. Think about it. If in the, the if beginning. You, you see, it's, it's, it's coming from with, yeah, it's coming from within, right? Right. I it's mean, coming from within. Exactly. From within. We are children of light by, yeah. by, you know, natural. And you don't find a baby that's born, that's literally born as a child of darkness. Yeah. An innocent baby is born as a child of light. But what happens to drive the light out of, out of them? Yeah, but when I say darkness, I'm not saying it as bad, and that's what a lot yeah. of people do. They, they, it's just like when we say uh, uh, feminine, masculine, negative, positive, they right. attach it to bad and good. Yeah, that's not what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, darkness. Um, but but let's say we would we go to a dark place. When I say go to a dark place, for me to protect your life, to to kill someone. I gotta go a certain. I gotta go somewhere inside to do that. Yeah, I, yeah. Be because yeah. there are people that should go that place, should go to that place, but they're frozen with the gun in their hand. They're frozen with the knife in their hand, or they can't grab the gun because they can't go to that place to the def to defend their life. They still can't go to that place. So when I say go to that place. To go to a, to a place where you can take a life, even if it's righteous, you got to go somewhere. It's not with the doves and the lilies and the roses that we, where you're going. Yes, it's with the flaming sword. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's why I say dark. Uh, 
But, like I said, it, it, you can have a righteous kill. But to really go there, you got to go. I mean, I've heard, uh, I heard Mike Tyson say it, and I've heard um, uh, Michael Jordan say it too. I think Tom Brady does it too. When they compete, when they're on the field, they're on the court, and uh, Kobe's done it too. I heard Kobe say he's done it. They go to a dark place. They 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 build up this certain energy, this dark energy, so they can compete on a different level than anyone else. But you can't go there to compete at that highest level if you're helping the opponent off the ground every time they fall. If if uh if if you know you're making sure you know you don't elbow the opponent, you're making sure <laughs> you're always playing within the rules. You can't really go to that highest level. And so it's like a psyching yourself out. It's a mind thing to go to that dark place so you can compete to the highest level. Um, yeah, yeah. And this is what they mean when commentators or, or uh, pundits mean when they say uh, he or she has some dog in them. That means, you know, they're getting nasty. They're going to a dark place. And ironically... You re- rearrange those words. You spell God, <laughs> you know. Hmm. So, but yeah. Yeah, I, 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 that's that's interesting. I mean, I know, like the Bible, I always wondered why it said there are gods many and there are lords many. Uh, hmm. There's every aspect, you know, within us of all these different things. Oh yeah, and. Uh, I've been listening again to the conversations with God book. It's, I've done it quite a few times, but again, they address some of those things that they're just so, you know, not what we typically think of, but you just sit there and you go, Hmm, that's real interesting. That is a real good book. And it's not religious for people that think it sounds religious. It's not just, but um, I know religious people they look at it usually run away. They think it's terrible, but I love the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, interesting. Yeah, very, very interesting. And I, I think uh, we're not taught, people are not taught to embrace their darkness and how to hone it and manage it. But, but, but check this out. Your light has to be managed also. You can't uh, recklessly... Uh, bring light out you can't rec- I don't think you can recklessly love I mean you're going to be unbalanced and you're going to have some people that take advantage of you if you just recklessly love and if you recklessly mm. if you recklessly uh, go into darkness recklessly you you can get killed you can be in penitentiary for a very long time uh, <laughs> or on the run mm. because it wasn't rooted in righteousness I just believe everything has to be rooted in righteousness, the darkness and the light. And the intent has to be pure. Hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So people who are wow. reckless. That, that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, if you watch, uh, just look at life and stories, people who are reckless in love, uh, they're reckless in darkness too. You know, um, they, they really are. People that can just... Uh, Recklessly love someone, just be so in love. I mean, cross that person or disappoint that person or break that person's heart or reject that person. Let's see how they react. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. I've never thought of anything that way. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I think everything has to be rooted in, in the proper aspect and, and somewhat controlled. It has to be orderly. I know yeah. women. I know women don't like to hear that. I mean, they want they want the man in love and and just give out that love freely and and have his head in the clouds over her, only her. But uh, it's a dangerous game. It's a dangerous game to play when a man yeah. is not orderly and, and in control of his emotions. Mhm. Yeah. Interesting. So, 
but it probably goes either way. I mean, a woman needs to be in control of hers as well, right? <laughs> I mean, otherwise oh, yeah. you're going to get, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, no no doubt. Uh, what was the saying? Uh, Hell have no fury like a woman scorn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a woman scorn, I think, is is far more dangerous than a man scorn. I, I think. Uh, <laughs> you know, most what, what times. exactly? I mean, like, what exactly is scorned? I mean, explain it's all about, it to me. I'm, yeah, I'm not... yeah, it's all about perception. You know, uh, perception is reality to some people. So you, it it might have been like you, you didn't want to be with them anymore, or you rejected their advances. You never worked together. You just rejected their advances. Uh, if they perceive that as however they, their mind works, they perceive that as uh, scorn, like you deliberately wanted to uh, hurt them or embarrass them or you know bring them pain. The way mm. their mind works, um, yeah, that's how they perceive it, and you know they can react in the uh, unjustly fashion. A harsh fashion mm. yeah, yeah I, I can't relate to that I, I can't I just can't really connect to it because it's like I feel well it's like everything works out the way it's supposed to and if that happens then there's a reason for it <laughs> but yeah. you know yeah. so I, I'm having a hard time connecting to that aspect as to what that's all about or why would you make a big trauma of something if it wasn't supposed to be anyways <laughs> <laughs> but I, I agree. Know. I agree. Hey, I agree. Unfortunately, <laughs> well, that's kind of that's kind of I guess egotistically. Unfortunately, everybody doesn't think like us. So, no, I, I guess I shouldn't say it that way. But uh, yeah, I, people do have different per perceptions, and probably you know, and probably one of the things is let's just let's just say rejection, for example. Let's just say a child grew up feeling rejected, feeling unwanted in the home. You know, maybe they had a single mother and, and they were born out of wedlock and they weren't wanted and they knew it. Mm -hmm. I would think that that would breed that kind of a of a outlook on something like that, because when that kind of a thing happens, um, they would it, it's rejection more than scorn. And that would be, you know, the it would be like, you know, rubbing salt in a wound that's already there from childhood. That's the only thing I can think of. Right, right. You know. That that happens. Yeah, that does happen. Because 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 if we're human, as humans, we're going to be hurt. That's just part of life. Right. There will be things that cause us pain that will cause us. But, but, you know, you can either learn to sit in the pain and, and let it fester, or you can, you know, just take it as part of life and move on and realize that everything happens for a reason there's a reason behind everything it's not just random randomly things happen right and just look within as to you know what that is and and be ready to i mean there's a saying blessed are the flexible they shall not be broken and that's the truth right the right. people that are broken are because there's hard infle inflexible parts of us that haven't healed i believe because oh, yeah. our spirit our spirit is flexible. The spirit is going to always be, you know, flexible and, and moving like, like a stream, stream of a water running. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Yeah. Like Bruce Lee says, be, be like water. That means, uh, be flexible, you know, be moldable. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's funny you say that I made a video today about, uh, always keep the ability to laugh at yourself. And uh, mm. and someone commented. Uh, I guess you would say her name, pronounce her name as Love Q. I believe she may be coming on the show actually. Uh, but uh, or Love Key, maybe Love Key. But um, yeah, I know who you mean. I, you know I, who I, I mean? I'm, I'm um, friends with her. Yes, 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 yes. I know. yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I love, love her. her quotes, yeah. <laughs> yes, I love her quotes. Yeah. I love her content. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. She may be coming on, may be coming on with us, it, it, yeah. But we'll 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 talk about it. Um, but she commented on that and said, "Yeah, we must keep a light heart." And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's the thing. Uh, when you said being flexible, we just 
it's, it's weird. Life is weird. Like, we should take it serious, but then on the other hand, we shouldn't take it too serious. I agree. I right. agree. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's a weird thing, right? Um, but that comes that, that scale, that balance. And so, uh, you know, things, real things happen in the world. Real hurt. You know, real stuff happens. But you got to balance it out by laughing and finding the funny. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. yeah, my dad, my dad is a kind of a prime example of that. Uh, we, <laughs> he would work on construction. We could always tell when he was hurt because when he got hurt, he would laugh. And the, the worse he was hurt, the louder he would laugh. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know why, but. But it was just that way. And so uh, I remember him, man, he fell off a ladder a long ways. <laughs> I don't know. He was lucky that he didn't get hurt really bad, but we heard him laughing and we knew something was wrong. I mean, the way he was laughing like really loud. Damn. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, he's taking it to another level. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I love that. Well, I, love I that, mean, there that is. Practice. <laughs> There is something to do with, you know, when you when you are hurt or when you have pain, laughter actually produces endorphins that actually is a painkiller. Oh, wow. I've never tried that. So I think some people actually develop that as a natural painkiller. They, they realize it and maybe develop it. My dad being one of them. Wow. It's all a mindset, huh? It is. Wow. Oh, wow. That's something. I got to try. Well, I don't want, I'm not uh, inviting pain, but I'll try that <laughs> next time. Have you heard the, have you heard the saying where they say, if you stand in front of the mirror and smile for five minutes straight, if you can actually handle that, all the, it, it actually produces endorphins and tons of healing hormones in your body, but it's really hard to do. I mean, literally your face gets so sore. You're just like, you don't even use those muscles. I haven't heard that. I'm going to try that today, though. <laughs> okay, you let me know if you can <laughs> manage it, because I haven't been able to, not for five minutes. <laughs> I'll let you know. I might record that. I'll let you know, though. Yeah, there you do. <laughs> do that. I'll, I want to see. <laughs> yeah, that, that's something. <laughs> because it, it, gets, it starts getting so funny that you can't help but just burst out laughing. But it's yeah. like as you're doing that, the most muscles in your body are right in your face. Wow, wow. It takes, well, let's say it this way. It takes the mo more, most muscles to smile than it does to do anything else. It takes more muscles to smile. Let's put it that way. Wow. But, I, ha I have done mirror gazing. I, I spoke on that before. That's powerful. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Now try the five minute smile because again, literally you can tell your body's releasing endorphins because the laughter just starts coming naturally after about a minute or so. You just can't help yourself. Yeah, and it gets funnier and funnier as time goes on. <laughs> yeah, because you're looking at yourself like, you're like, damn, I'm goofy. <laughs> this is goofy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think, we, I, I think we need that. And a lot of people, especially as we get older and, you know, we've gone through all kinds of things in our life, we forget it. And I think it's just critical for us to remember to feed the, the child in us, if you want to call it that way, or just just have a light heart, have a merry heart, you know, and, and yeah. just be, be able to, you know, enjoy, laugh and enjoy and, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. 